Play. So a couple of more building blocks with which we can do more interesting things. So again, a function is a chunk of code, a chunk of lines of programming code that do something. And what do they do? It's really up to you. Main is entirely up to you because what you put in main, just like in Scratch, what you put in when green flag clicked is what happens when you start running the program. Now printf. You can control its behavior only to some extent. Printf is another function whose purpose in life, again, is to print something to the screen, but the f actually denotes something. It means formatted. Because even though we've been using it for very simple things, oh, hi world, you can actually print numbers and characters and whole words and sentences and other things. You can format numbers as integers, as real numbers with decimal points and all sorts of other conventions. And so printf takes what are called arguments. So when we saw printf before, recall that we saw these parentheses inside of my program. And anytime you see parentheses after the name of a function, that's your way of modifying its behavior. If you think back in Scratch with all those puzzle pieces, sometimes you could type a number into a little white box or you could drag a puzzle piece on top of another and it would sort of magically grow and then contain it. Well, same idea here. You can modify the behavior of puzzle pieces and functions by passing them arguments. It's just in C, you have to be a little more deliberate with the keyboard. And so anytime you see parentheses right, out at, right after a function name, that means it's taking input, generally called arguments or parameters. Uh, but these are, for our purposes, now synonymous. It takes input. Why is that useful? Well, it'd be a pretty stupid function if all printf could do is print oh hi world, it'd be nice if it could print anything. And indeed it can, I just have to choose as the programmer what to pass in between double quotes. Now any guesses as to what this backslash n at the end has been representing? So new line. So computers, again, are pretty dumb. They only do what you tell them to do. And if you don't tell them to move the blinking cursor to the next line, it's not going to do it. So if I actually omit this, save my file, and let me zoom in, and then rerun make uh, hello, enter, and then run hello, notice what happens at the prompt. It's kind of a mess. It says, oh, hi, world, exclamation point, but then the prompt reappears. And that's because I've omitted the backslash n. And we'll see there's other ones. There's backslash r and backslash t, but backslash n is by far the most commonly used in C and in other languages. So what else? do we want to know about? Well, in C, you have the notion of variables, which we'll see in a moment. But these variables are of specific types. There's a char, which represents a single character, the act of touching one key on the keyboard. There's an int, which is an integer. Uh, now, an integer, as an aside, is 32 bits. And we only had 8 bits on stage before. With 8 bits, you can represent how many different values? It's actually 256. How do you get there? Well, if you have eight bits here, and each of these bits or volunteers can be a 0 or a 1, there's two opportunities here, two opportunities here, two opportunities here, 0 or 1, 0 or 1. So if you multiply all those together, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's the same thing as 2 to the 8, and that's 256. So now if you have a 32-bit number, not an 8-bit number, but a 32-bit number, that's 2 to the 32, which is roughly, anyone know? It's actually 4 billion, give or take. So 2 to the 32 is 4 billion. Now what's the takeaway? That means an integer in a computer can store the number from 0 to 4 billion, or more typically, from negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion, give or take. But notice the key takeaway here, it's finite. There's only a fixed number of bits, which means there's only a fixed range of values, which means at some point, if you try counting up to 2 billion, 2 billion, 1, 2 billion, 2, 2 billion, 3, eventually what's going to happen? You're actually going to end up being back at zero or a negative number. Some crazy thing's going to happen where your counting is actually going to wrap around and bad things then happen as a result. So, how do you get even bigger numbers? Well, you use bigger integers. You use 64 bit integers. So, if you've heard that your PC or Mac these days is 64 bit, that means that all of the numbers with which it performs math are now 64 bits. And that generally is good for speed and performance, um, but it also means older programs that are 10 years old or more often will break on that computer. So we are using, as an aside, a 32-bit uh, virtual machine so that it works on anyone's laptop, even if it's several years old. But there's other data types. Chars are 8 bits. Ints are 32 bits. Uh, float is also 32 bits, but it's what's called a floating point value, a real number, where the decimal point can actually 
It's a, it's a real number with a decimal point. Now, there too, if you think about it, real numbers we were taught in grade school can be infinitely precise. You can have 0.3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, and you put a little line over it, which means infinitely many threes. That's really darn precise. It means one third exactly. Computers, you're going to have to stop writing down threes at some point, right? Just conceptually, even if bits are completely new to you, it stands to reason that if you only have a fixed number of them, whether it's eight, or 32 or 64, at some point you're going to have to decide do I want to represent 0.3333333 or 0.4444444? In other words, there's only a finite number of permutations of zeros and ones, only a finite number of permutations of these eight humans on stage. So you've got to pick which of those real numbers do you want to represent. So in short, computers are inherently imprecise, and this can actually create some significant problems. If you think back some 10 plus years, the Y2K problem, which is one of the more recent times when everyone thought the world was going to end, well, what was the Y2K problem? What was the source of that issue and all the drama? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, in a lot of computer programs, the date accidentally went from 1999 back to 1900 because the programmers made the judgment call, good or bad at the time, to, you know, ugh, this, no one's going to be using my software in the year 2000. I'm just going to use two digits to represent the two numbers after the 19. So the problem, though, is if you're only using two digits and you get to 1998, so 98, 99. What do you get when you want to hit 2000? You need the number 100, but if you're only using three decimal digits, you're kind of out of luck. So, what did these programs do in Y2K? They wrapped around back to 00, so all of a sudden people's dates were 1900. And just bad things happened. The world did not, in fact, end. And in fact, a lot of people made a lot of money fixing all these problems,、um, but、uh, using fairly arcane languages at that time. But the point was that that was just a design decision, arguably a foolish design decision, but if you can imagine from the 10,000 Pound computer, memory was expensive back in the day, and it wasn't all that large. So, you wanted to cut as many corners as possible, but it turns out that people were still using software that's 20 years old, 30 years old. And I don't doubt on campus there's computers that are still running software that old, and they've just been patched together over time. So, what can you do when you need a bigger number than 32 bits、uh, for an int or a float? Well, there's Uh, ironically, you'd think it would be a long number, but it's in fact not. It's usually a long, long. So we'll see that you call the data type, the type of number, it's a long, long, and that typically gives you 64 bits. If you want even more precision for that decimal point, you can instead use a double, which is a 64 bit real number. It's still finite. So, you cannot, in fact, represent all possible values despite what we learned in grade school. You have to choose a finite range of them. So, again, that means that computers are inherently imprecise. So, how do we actually use these things? Well, we've only seen printf as a function thus far. And so, we've actually seen way more functions or、uh, puzzle pieces in Scratch. So, let's round out a few more. So, in C, it's actually not all that easy to get user inputs. You kind of have to jump through some hoops just to see what the user typed, and not to mention convert what they've typed from ASCII characters. To actually, numbers. For instance, when you type in 1.5 on a keyboard, that's not a number. That's actually the character one, the character period, the character five. So you have to kind of convert that to a floating point value. And how we do that, we'll ignore for now. But suffice it to say, some work has to go in to getting user input. So we 